As the sun breaks along Lake Megantic, a welcome sight, crystal clear water and freshly mowed grass growing in the park. Look a little closer at some of the memorials scattered throughout the city and you'll see why this view is so incredible. This was Megantic's downtown just nine years ago. Cleanup had already begun after fire and oil destroyed homes and businesses and important infrastructure like sewer and water lines. My photographer and I got a tour through what they deemed the red zone. Some 50 buildings were either leveled by fire or ultimately torn down and all of the soil was removed. Everything fresh, nearly everything rebuilt. We came back nine years later and spoke about the changes with Stefan Vachon, the director of economic development for Lake Megantic. He and his wife grew up here. Yeah, businesses had to relocate ASAP after the tragedy. So since the uh, decontamination took uh, a little over two years, so they had to relocate you know, sooner than that. It was done within, uh, I think, uh, eight to nine months. Most were rebuilt on Papino Street, which runs parallel to the old downtown. Among the businesses relocated there, the Music Cafe, which was one of the first places hit by the train derailment and explosion in 2013. It's where most people were killed in the early morning hours of July 6th while having a drink and enjoying live music. I think we're at least back to where we were, but in a different way it's because you don't go through something like that uh, without any impact or changes, you know. However, the old rebuilt downtown isn't exactly bustling. It's separated from Papino Street by railroad tracks and trains continue to roll through. Ten years later, a memorial now sits where that music cafe once was with a tribute to the 47 people killed there. And to the town's relief, finally a conversation about moving the train tracks away from town. A conversation that began shortly after the rail disaster and multiple studies later, the government of Canada says the Lake Megantic bypass is close to happening as landowner holdouts are served eviction notices and payments. The train has been the, as part of the development of North America, you know. So Canada was built on the railroads. So it's going to be, and, and in the future, if you talk about sustainable development, trains is the least uh, GMS, uh, less pollu polluting way of transportation for every hundred thousand pounds you carry, you know. So it's going to be there forever. So uh, we have to work with it. However, Vachon admits getting the trains out of downtown will be a relief. It will also allow them to bridge the separated downtowns. Even as, as a resident here, are there still lingering concerns about health, what could come in the nope. future, about... No. Nope. While the city rose from the ashes, so did opportunity. Vachon says the people of Megantic weighed in on what they wanted, which included more solar power projects, more green space and less light pollution, and a new boat launch that requires each boat be cleaned off before entering, keeping the lake healthy, not just rebuilding Megantic, but ensuring its future in a changing climate. Are there businesses and people who left who will never come back? Probably, yes. Uh, I knew, I'm thinking a couple of people, you know, that they couldn't take it and uh, they had to go. But we had many, many, many more coming in, you know. A lot of young families and young people who wanna, who were inspired by all this story, you know.